What is up, my friends? It is Thursday night's late night agenda. And as always, I hope that life is treating you well. We're going to do what we always do tonight. Go through the latest stories surrounding Liverpool Football Club. Ask you guys to let me know your opinion in the comment section. And see if we can find a bit of a consensus about the direction that Liverpool summer transfer business is taking. Tonight, we're going to be looking to Italy for a couple of players that we can potentially rule out. We're going to be speaking about some of our competitors' business and what they look like they're going to do. And a few other bits and pieces along the way so look i'm going to get straight into it and i'm going to start off by saying at this particular moment in time it is very difficult to gauge what direction liverpool's summer transfer business is going to go i've seen some stuff that makes me feel optimistic some stuff that makes me feel pessimistic and some stuff that puts me somewhere in the middle so let's start off with what we definitely know we know Alexis McAllister is at the reds we're happy about that and we know that kefren thuram looks like he'll be the next player in but the question is is he going to be the last of Liverpool's midfield recruits? I'm going to go through the video and let you see why I think he could well be, but I hope that I'm wrong. So stick with me. We'll go through it over the next few minutes. And we'll start off with Federico Chiesa. So there's still reports coming out of Italy to suggest that Liverpool are at the front of the queue for Federico Chiesa. The Juventus won 51 million for the player. We know that Bayern Munich had been mentioned. But as per sources coming out of Italy, it says Juventus are willing to listen to offers for Federico Chiesa this summer. They value him at £51 million as of now. Liverpool is the club the most concrete interest and are preparing a £35 million bid. So if that's true, I'm very happy with every single part of that. And I don't know if it's true or not. But £35 million was the number we mentioned when we said that we'd be comfortable at Liverpool maybe going in at that number. Because Chiesa isn't a position that we really need to fill. It would be a lovely option if we could. And sometimes it's right time, right player, right offer. I hope this could be one of them, but I wouldn't hold my breath. I'm not envisioning Federico Chiesa joining Liverpool anytime soon. But let's wait and see what happens. Just going to fill you guys in on the latest. Now, Liverpool search for a centre-back. We've only really seen one concrete name over the past month or so. Lots of stuff about Indica, who's gone to Roma. A few other bits and pieces as well. But the one name that keeps coming up, of course, is Mickey van de Ven. And Liverpool will 100% sign a centre-back this summer. That's according to David Lynch. They say that Wolfsburg Mickey van de Ven is one of several options that Liverpool are considering. I've honestly got no clue who the other options could be. And nasty often sporting we've spoken about before, but everything I've read in recent history points to this gentleman, Mickey van de Ven. I don't know if it's because George Schmadke was there when he went to Wolfsburg. I don't know if it's lazy from the journalist point of view. But I really have no insight into who the centre-back could be if it isn't Mickey van der Ven. So again, to you guys, let me know who you'd like to see and let, you, let me know who you think is realistic. We'd all love Jasko Gvardiol, but we also know that that's not realistic for Liverpool in this window. Manchester City look like they're going to spend big money. Jasko Gvardiol could well be one of those signings. But the next bit of news I'm moving on to is one that quite frankly terrifies me a little bit. So we know that Manchester City have bought Kovacic from Chelsea, but it doesn't look like they're going to stop there. It looks like they're going to rival Arsenal for the signature of Declan Rice. And that worries me a lot. Because Manchester City are already ahead of the chasing pack. We know that. We can talk about how they got there. That's another day's conversation. But they are there. And if they're going out there and bringing in a player like Kovacic to replace Gundogan, then bringing in somebody like Declan Rice, that really, really strikes fear into my heart. So I hope that Arsenal can get him over Manchester City. But again, why aren't Liverpool in this conversation? We should be. For a club of our standard, we should be able to be in that conversation. Yes, maybe we can compete with City. We should be able to compete with Arsenal. But with the owners that we have, it looks like penny pinching is the order of the day. And that's where I get mostly frustrated. So yes, we can have a conversation that Liverpool will address everything they need to address in this window. We might bring in enough midfielders. We might bring in a defender. But are they the very best? That's where I think no. McAllister, I'm really happy with. I think that's genuinely excellent business from the football club. But when you see a Thuram, a Gravenberch... And you know that Rice and Barella are on the market. It really worries me that we don't have owners that seem to want us to be able to compete. They always look for the lower value, high potential targets. And that's okay when you're at a certain level. But when you've gotten to the top of the mountain, which we have, and we've done under these owners, in fairness to them, we need to stay there and we need to continue to push on. And we're just not doing that with the type of transfer targets we're going after. There's still a lot of risk involved. And whilst no transfer is, of course, risk-free, you know, a Barella or a Rice, they're names that will 
get fans up off their seats, that will sell shirts, that will give us belief that the owners actually want to go out there and really try their very best for Liverpool to win trophies. So look, let's move on to where we know we're at. Catherine Thuram is looking likely to be the next midfielder that Liverpool sign. There's talk that negotiations are going on with Nice over a fee and that both clubs, both Liverpool and Nice, are sort of happy to allow the Euros to go on to see how the kid goes and see what happens after that. Now, Football Insiders say that Liverpool would look to avoid a bidding war and Nice will obviously look to try and start a bidding war. But I don't think we'll get into that situation because the kid looks like he wants to come to Liverpool. You know, couple that with all the stuff about Canade speaking about him. Uh, the, the interest, of course, with his agent at Nice trying to sort out and move away from the club and the profile of him as well. Physically, he ticks the boxes. Age-wise, he ticks the boxes. Style of midfielder we need, he potentially ticks the boxes. But it is still somewhat of a risk. So I'm going to get a bit... Blunt now. If Liverpool finish this window and we spend 70 million in total to rebuild our midfield, and even if we bring in a defender, I'm sorry, to me, that's not good enough. That isn't enough of a big rebuild. That isn't anywhere near what we were led to believe was going to be happening. And it does look more and more like they're starting to drip feed into the media that it could only be two midfielders. Now, for me, two midfielders is okay if Trent becomes a midfielder, but then you need to look at the right back situation and again. I've not seen anything to suggest concretely that Liverpool are looking to address the right-back position. So where are we with regard to Gabri Viega? Well, a report today that came out said that Liverpool and Chelsea have both put an offer to the player of a wage of about £83,000 a week, which is about, what, €100,000, about €5 million Euro a year to Gabri Viega. Nobody really needs to negotiate on the fee for the kid because we know he's €40 million. Euro. That's his bio clause. But again, there's a lot of stuff to say if Liverpool have enough money that they'll go in for Gabriel Viega. That really worries me, especially when I've just pointed out that we walked away from Bellingham because we didn't want to spend all that Bellingham money on package on one player, but yet we're happy to spend less than that on three potentially. Doesn't make sense to me. We either have the money or we don't. And I think it's going to be a long summer, my friends. I do. Nothing seemingly is going to happen with regard to any of these guys, obviously, till the Euros are over. That drags us into July. And I'm, I'm just getting a bit concerned. I am. I don't like to be the voice of misery, but I like to be the voice of reality. And I get the feeling that we're seeing a cheapskate window. I don't think we'll see a bid for Barella from Liverpool. I don't think we'll see a bid for Declan Rice for Liverpool. And that, again, is my point. Yes, we can rebuild, but are we rebuilding to our best? Are we doing the best? There's an old phrase, buy cheap, buy twice. Doesn't necessarily apply to football, but in most things in life, you get what you pay for. And I'd like to see Liverpool go out there and bring in a Barella just to make a statement to the fan base, to make a statement to the league that we really are here to compete. We see what might be happening with Ruben Neves and that very, very questionable deal of him going to Saudi, maybe coming back on loan to Newcastle for two years. That cannot be allowed to happen. So now it's over to you guys. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think will happen. And let me know if you're okay with this much of a rebuild. Two midfielders, maybe Thuram and uh, McAllister and maybe a centre-back. If that's your summer business, are you going to be happy about it? Over to you. Talk to you soon. Much love. Bye-bye.